Okay, Mishle 11, 15. Okay, and this one, Ariel, this one has to do with business. <laughs> Baruch we'll Hashem. Yeah, okay. Ra, and this is hard to translate though. Ra ye roa ki arav zar vesone tok im boteach. Okay, extremely difficult translation. So I'm going to go ahead and tackle this one. Uh, okay, so ra ye you would assume comes from the shores of ra, like bad. And that apparently is still the, you know, the first uh, go-to thing, but none of the Mepharshim take it that way, okay? They take it here, and it's a double Lashon, so whatever it is, it's going to be, like, intensified. So the way they take it is the secondary meaning of break, okay? Ra'a, which, as you can see from the Al Torah uh, translation here, sorry, the, uh, yeah, the dictionary, it's an Aramaic loan word from Ratzat, okay? And if you know, um, if you've done uh, Hebrew and Aramaic stuff, you'll notice that the Hebrew tzadi changes to an Aramaic ayin. So, for example, the Hebrew word eight for wood is a'a or a'a in Aramaic. So, ratzat becomes ra'a, right? So, that's the thing. So, that's how all the mafarshim take it. I think all the mafarshim, I don't think I saw anyone say that it means anything else. So, um, uh, so you'll see what it means in a second. So, mean, ra'yiro means he will surely be broken, ki arav zar. Okay, so this, this is another confusing thing. Okay, so Arav, hold on. Arav is to take a pledge on or to give in pledge or to exchange uh, or to, what are the other words? Uh, like Ko Yisrael, uh, all of Israel, you know, every Jew is a, a guarantor for the other one. For some reason, I have this confusion or these blocks about terminology that uses like guaranteeing and making um like uh like financial like co-signing and stuff so i'm gonna try to be clear but if you think i'm making a mistake then call me out on it because i might be making a mistake um so the way i would translate this is like this uh he who arav czar okay who um who i'm gonna go ahead and use what our school is gonna say which who, who co-signs okay i'll explain what this is in a little while who co-signs for a, a czar a stranger okay ra ye roa will surely be broken or actually let's say will utter, will be utterly broken the sone tokim boteach but one who hates now toki tokea you would think like tequila like shofar which literally means to thrust clap give a blow or a blast but the third meaning of tokea means to strike or clap hands uh also late of gesture ratifying a bargain so this is like the the ancient term for what we would call a handshake okay so one who hates handshakes and i think all the the translators i saw go like that botea is secure okay so let's actually i just want to actually show you the oops the english first because i think it'll be easier to follow here and then we'll look at the the other mafarshim what's going on here okay yeah so our scroll says <clears throat> One will shoot, will be utterly broken by co-signing for a stranger, but a hater of handshakes will be secure. Okay, and plain shot here is let's say uh, uh, I, I don't think this is like actually you know, I'm going to leave it leave it out. Uh, is this part of the facts or is this part of the interpretation? Okay, I'm going to give a factual thing, but we can be open to other interpretations here. So let's say um, let's say uh, a person wants to uh, borrow money from Ariel, okay? Uh, and I don't know who this person is, okay? But the person knows that I have money. So he goes to me and says, will you co-sign on my uh, my loan? Which means that that he's responsible, the, the stranger who is borrowing the money is responsible for paying it back. But if he doesn't pay it back, then I basically am agreeing to, to take on the debt. Right. So Ariel now is in a good position because Ariel knows that no matter what, he's going to get the money. Uh, and I'm basically backing up this uh, this this guy. Right. So it's saying if it's a stranger, then, then uh, you'll be utterly broken. OK, but a hater of handshakes will be secure. Living in Knox says there is evil in store for the one who pledges security on behalf of a stranger. Same idea. It doesn't use the word co-signing, but I think it's the same idea. While one who detests handshakes is secure. And then Alter says he will be he will surely be shattered who gives bond for a stranger. Okay, I, I don't. I, I assume that that's just some sort of similar lesson here. But he who hates offering pledge is secure. Okay, I don't know what our, what Alter is doing, but but our school and Living Knock are similar enough to ours that I'm just going to go with this. Okay, now let's look at the other translations here. So uh, Matus Tzion says, "Ra Yeroa is Inyan Hashever Baharatzutz Kamo Teroim Bashevet Barzel." So he says, "Ra Yeroa means he will be like smashed." 
right? So that's what we uh, what we said. Now, side going is a little difficult, okay? Because I it could be I'm making a grammatical mistake. But let, 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 let's see what happens. Ra tavo lamisha aravzar. Okay, so evil. Oh, so sorry, I, I misspoke. He does say it means ra, like badness. Evil will come to or harm. Let's say harm will come to one who uh, shar of czar, who cosigns for a stranger. Okay. The sone hatoki im kaf huboteach. Now, this is what I'm not sure grammatically about. If it said sone like toki im kaf, I would say one who hates handshakes, but sonim hatoki im kaf, I think it might mean one who hates people who make handshakes. I think, not 100% sure, but one who hates, so handshakers, okay, is secure. I think that's what hatokim means, not 100%. And then, you know, I'm not even going to attempt to translate this. I'll just read it. Bisha mav Oh, so he also learns it as bad. Okay, so bad stuff will happen, but tzadika, oh my goodness, hold on just a second here. Matul duhu ar All right. So, all right, for, forget it. Uh, th this is this is a real interpretation. Okay, bisha bisha mav ish the tzadika. I think tzadika is a tzadik. Okay, one. So bad stuff will happen to a tzadik. Mitul duhu arv chilonai because he cosigns for a stranger. The sane li ilan the saimin sivrehun belaka. Whoa, okay, this is totally. Oh my goodness. Okay, hold on a second. I, I don't know what this means, but I think I think he's going. Okay. He, he's taking this as a uh, what do you call um, a, as an allegory, which we rarely see the the targum do. I'm gonna actually hold off on translating this now because I think Rashi takes this approach, which I don't think we're gonna get to Rashi. But if we do, we'll do it from Rashi instead of the targum. Okay, but uh, he's making it about a tzaddik and about some sort of a, a vodazara thing. Okay, let, let's let's leave that off for a while. Okay, so we have our translation here, and we are ready for questions. What the heck's going on? Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> I mean, like, like, what's what? What? Why should I? If uh, if I hit a handshake, why am I secure? And or who is secure? Okay. Opposed right, so, to what? Opposed to like a yeah. contract? Like what? Okay. Okay. So let, let, let's uh, <laughs> let's break it down, right? So, so um, so secure from from what? Okay, that's the the distinct question I heard you ask. Yeah, and um, and what what what's what's the connotation of having a handshake? Okay, yeah. So what? Uh, okay, so first of all, let's ask like what type of handshake or what scenario of handshaking uh, is this referring to? Okay, and in fact, yeah, Zach. Uh, it was just the next best step of it. So I, I, I was going to say, like, uh, like this does imply all handshakes, right? Uh, is this all handshakes? Sounds like it's all handshakes because it doesn't say one who hates handshakes with strangers, you know? Or like, what's the parameters then of this handshaking business? Yeah. What? Right. <laughs> and yeah, and, uh, and and who is this guy that hates handshakes? Like, okay. So uh, that, that one, the, the, the one I just asked, I feel like is the way I was going to ask that question is this seems like there's a lot of actors in this yeah. pasuk, and who are they all? Okay, so there's, that's actually a, a, nice, a nice way to, to get it all concise. Okay, so who are the players and what is the scenario? Because there's okay. he who co-signs for a stranger, then there's yeah. the stranger, and then there's um the one who hates handshakes and then they're right. being secure from what <laughs> yeah. is right. it is it being secure from being utterly broken and is that implying that there might be another invisible player who would break or secure you you know like yeah. how right. many players are there okay that's a good that's that's a good question yeah. yeah that's what you were meaning when you said uh ariel when you said what the heck is going on here right <laughs> like what's the scenario yeah 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 you asked it the way that ryan moskowitz would always ask it <laughs> what the heck is going on here <laughs> yeah right and, and it just seems like a bit 
at face value a counter mishlaic yeah. tone. Yeah, yeah, right. Um, so let's also say here, um, uh, yeah, I mean, hmm. I, I'm like, just gonna, yeah. No, no, if you want to elaborate on what you meant, I, I agree but, with you. I was just trying so to So meaning out. like, is let's start with the first half. Is co-signing for a stranger is bad? Which part is bad or both? Is co-signing bad? Is, co is it doing it for a stranger that's bad? Okay, yeah. So what exactly is bad in the first half? Okay, is it co-signing um, period uh, or specifically for a stranger? And then the flip of that is what exactly good is good about hitting handshakes? Is it hitting handshakes that's good or hitting handshakes with a stranger uh, yeah. that's good? But hating handshakes. And I'm going to actually put, I think with the tone thing, I mean, I don't know if this is what you were picking up with the tone in, but like uh, hating handshakes sounds extreme and antisocial, <laughs> right? I mean, like, I, I don't know if that's the best word, but like, that, that's the vibe. Like, like you picture someone saying, I refuse to make any deals. And it just it's like a doesn't contra up the image of a mislaid person. What was that, Joseph? Sounds like, like a, something Larry David would say. Like just yeah, like, right. Right, I, I, I don't do it. Do yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, also like, like, in what way will he be utterly broken? Like, what? Yeah. I mean, or, I mean, I get that he may go bankrupt, but like, utterly broken is very like extreme. Right. Uh, uh, what does Rai Roa mean? So, if it means, um, will suffer. Uh, he will, will suffer. Uh, great maybe harm. Maybe another way to or to elaborate on that question is yeah. like, is the utterly broken only in so much as the co-signing? Meaning, like, if you co-sign on a million dollars, is it limited? Like, in financial terms, is it a limited loss or an unlimited loss? Okay, and is right. Utterly bro right. broken in terms of co in in terms of co-signing or just in general past. Uh, okay, good. Yeah, yeah. All right, good. So, um, uh, and why and, specifically a stranger? Well, I'm just, just saying, is this harm, mm -hmm. um uh like confined to the do you mean like is, is it confined to like the, the direct consequences of the co-signing or does it, the breaking extend beyond that okay yeah so does this, is this harm confined to the direct uh like like um uh loss incurred by the co-signing uh or does the harm extend beyond that all right what do you say never mind it's already asked I, okay. I just asked why specifically a stranger but, but also yeah. meaning, like, you can have a friend who's also a dope and he also destroys mm -hmm. you too well so that's Remember the thing what? about the hating handshakes right is that it, so it sounds like you're even not having handshakes with your friend right but that was actually uh, what i was going to ask about the question before is that is the handshake um referring is it is it a separate statement or is it is it continuing like is it parallel to the first half and where it's referring just to handshakes with strangers? Right. So I'll just add just strangers. Right. Yeah. Um, also, why isn't like uh, the idea of um, like if you don't do it, you can't be harmed by it. Like that's not good advice, right? If I don't do business, I can't right. be harmed <laughs> by business. Right? Okay. Like, yeah. Okay. And like, why, why are you saying you, it just sounds like you're just avoiding the topic so you don't get damaged by it. Why right. is that like a good good advice? Okay, like, shouldn't that, you say good. you're saying like don't operate in this system and you won't get harmed by this system? Why not give advice that says you can operate in the system and you won't be harmed by this system? Yeah. Okay. You know? good. So so is is Michelet really telling you don't don't involve yourself in the system of handshakes and you'll avoid all harm? Uh, wouldn't it be better to figure out a way to involve yourself, right? So like, i.e. make handshakes uh, and avoid the harm. That's, I think, another thing that was, uh, that, that feels anti mishlaic about it. You know, like it'd be saying like, like, again, I, I'm using handshakes as synonymous with deals. And like, if you, if you made a deal for a Russia, of course you're going to be harmed. That doesn't mean you avoid making all deals. Right, just avoid making deals with Rashaim or deals that will expose you to harm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, another question I would have here 
is uh, I'm going to put this as a who is the audience, but I, I have a specific uh, addition to that. So who is the audience? Okay, in other words, um, what what would make this guy? What's this? What's the Hava Amina, right? What is the Hava Amina? Uh, why would this guy cosign for a stranger? Okay, because again, uh, it sounds dumb, right? Like, is he really that dumb? Right? Some guy comes up. I mean, if, if this is a literal stranger, which I guess is a question we have to ask here, right? We didn't ask that yet. Um, yeah, who's a stranger? Uh, where is this going to be here? Um, uh, under the players, right? Under the we have players. A bunch of... Yeah, right. Thank you. Uh, who? Uh, who is this? What? What? What is meant by czar? In this context. Is right, it another, yeah. Another question is, uh, you know, what about just loaning, lending him money, or? Mm, right. Is that, is that the same as co-signing? And, okay. And, yeah. And right. To jump on board that question is, yeah. is it seems almost not just counter Mishli, but like counter the Torah, because isn't there like a mitzvah to loan money? Right. Well, I think yeah. only to, I think only to your, you know, people, meaning to Jews is like a mitzvah. I think. Yeah, but what if this guy's a Jew though? Um. So like Zach saying, like if you if loaning money to him sure. is good, then co-signing for him, I mean, that also sounds good. Right. Right. So let's put that question here as I'm just going to ask. Actually, I'm going to ask that as a separate question, which well, so is. Can I, can I ask another question on that? I mean, not on the question, but yeah, with that question, um, you know, because can you also ask that the coast may, maybe maybe uh, the co-signer is at, at um. You know, like you could have different types of co-signers. You could have a co-signer who's like not wealthy, or you could have a co-signer just doesn't really care and like whatever. And it's not gonna really destroy him. So you could have different, you know, you know, spectrums of co-signers as well. Yeah. But like when it comes to the mitzvah thing, like I guess it just also depends on the individual and his capabilities as well. Right. So there could be parameters, right? I and I, I just wanna um I'll, I'll add that here also, which is um uh what kind of cosigner signer are, are uh, is this talking to? So I also have like a sort of two part question, which is yeah. when it says handshake, is it still talking about cosigning, or right. does it mean something else? And if it means something else, could we potentially look up for other times he uses that word handshakes and see see if something pops? Yeah, um, between handshakes and cosigning. Yeah, so there is actually, um, I actually was debating whether or not to do this, but I'll show it to you now in case it's relevant. This actually comes up in the first part of Mishle. Uh, hold on just a second here. This comes up in the first part of Mishle, the part that we don't usually learn, which is uh, going to be in chapter six. Uh, and it's just a more expansive version of this. And then I'll, I'll use that to search for other cases. Why don't I click the window? I guess I did. All right, so chapter six. It's the first puzzle in chapter six. First couple of seconds. Bini, my son. Im aravta lareecha. If you have co-signed for your friend, okay, or your fellow, right? Like we have to lareecha kamocha. Takata lazar kapecha. And I think you have to insert another if there. If you have um, shaken hands with a stranger. No kashte bim reficha. You have become ensnared by the words of your mouth, you become trapped by the statements of your mouth. Um, yeah, actually, I'm going to get the uh, translation here because this is a weird uh, statement where is, here. Where is this? This is a Mishle. Yeah, Mishle 6, uh, 1 through 4, 1 through 5. Oh. Um, and it's, it's this is even weirder. And some of the Mepharshim, by the way, do direct us here. Uh, but I kind of want to take our puzzle on its own because um, this is a little bit more complicated. Uh, and the puzzle is already complicated enough. So the way our score translates it is, my child, if you have been a guarantor for your friend, if you have given your handshake for a stranger, you have been trapped by the mouth, by the words of your mouth, snared by the words of your mouth. Do this, therefore, my child. So, do this, my son, my child, and be rescued. Kivasa uh, For you have come into your fellow's hand. 
Lech hisra pes urahav re'echa. Um, go humble yourself before him and placate your fellow. Uh, Give not sleep to your eyes nor slumber to your eyelids. Uh, yakush. Be rescued like a deer from the hunter's hand and like a bird from the, from the fowler. Yeah, I, I think the case here is different because if I remember the last time we read, we learned this earlier in, in uh, Raman Bakius last year, um, then this was talking about a case where like you somehow wronged your friend and you have to go like, Humble yourself to him. So I, I don't know if this is it, but let me, I'll see if I can find Zach's question about looking up where this phrase is used. Um, yeah, it's going to actually be a little hard to look for because we need to look for Tokea and Kaf. And it's, it's possible that that these are the only, because Tokea usually does mean um, like shofar, <laughs> right? Or, or some instrument. Uh, I would do a search. I, I could do a search. Hold on. I'll just do a quick search. You know, I, 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 my, my intuition is telling you that this is not going to help us right now. I think it's just going to drag us into other cases. And I kind of want to keep it um, simple, but I'll just, I'll humor you. Okay, I cough. I'm going to just see if that searches, if that shows anything. Um, Tanakh. Yerecho, Vateka, Kaf, Yerech, Yaakov. Okay, so that's a, uh, that's a dislocation of the hip. That's not what we're talking about here. Shmuel Bechapo, no. Taku Kaf Alacha. Uh, okay, so that looks like one, but is there other ones in Mishle? Yeah, so I think all the cases in Mishle are used in similar cases. There's three of them. There's Arpaz. So there's places meaning all with uh, cosigners or? Uh, yeah, Toke Kaf, but Orvim. I assume Orvim is a cosigner also, like uh, Arav. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I think it's going to be better if we just stick to Arpaz. So, well, I guess my, 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 does that mean for us, are we narrowing handshakes to the context of co-signing or do we have liberties with the term handshake? Right. It's a good question. I, I think we have liberties because he uses a different term, even though it's used in conjunction with handshakes, because it could be that Shlomo is just giving this one piece of advice that this is the only thing you should be aware of about handshakes is the co-signing thing, but it is a different a different term. Would you mind making your screen bigger? Uh, you mean like no, like your window, uh, like your ex windows. Um, yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, perfect. Yeah. Okay. I feel like we got the main questions, right? Yeah. All right. So let let's zoom out. Oh my, hold on, let me just see if I can, sometimes this helps if I do it, uh, landscape. And you know, I'm gonna, yeah, Sadi, I, I'm still not sure about my Sadi uh reading. All right, let's think. I got a confession, which is that uh, this is one of the first psukim I taught in my first Mishle this year. So it's very hard for me to shake the memory of, of those ideas. So I, I do have an idea, but it's like, it's not a fresh idea. It's, it's a good idea, but it's not a fresh idea, but it's going to be like impinging on me. So I'm going to count on you to help me. This, this was your first Mishle year? Not, no, no, no. It was one of the, it was in the first Mishle class. I used to teach uh, this Pasuk as one of the ones that I chose to like demonstrate Mishle thinking. Huh. Before she'll have it. Oh, to the boys' high school? Uh, before the boys' high school. This is to Hafter. I have a half baked idea when you're ready. Okay. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm good. Yeah, you want to tell me your half baked idea? Go ahead. Because I'm just gonna isolate the second half of the puzzle. <laughs> okay, that's fine. Okay. 
That's the definition of half baked. <laughs> and and I'm speaking through experience right now. Okay. Um. You know, so so we're trained, you know, to to not just get a verbal agreement. Yeah. You know, we're trained, you know, to also put it put it in contract. Right. Right. In fact, there were many many cases where you have a few people going to business together, and they they verbally agree on something, but they just never write things down and in the future. Um, you know, it just comes back to bite them in the touches. Yeah. And relationships are ruined and uh it, it hurts because oh they they said that but they didn't think it, it the expectations weren't clear and this, that, whatever. You know, that's like one case. And then you have other cases where no, we don't have to have a contract, we'll just we'll just shake on it because because you trust me, I trust right. you, right? We're Jews, yeah. you know. It's all good, right? Yeah. You know, but I'll tell you right now, there are some Jews out there who are really, you know, not <laughs> great. Yeah. Okay. So that's actually a good fresh approach. Okay. Which is that, that, um, that. Oh, wait, wait there's one more line. Oh, sorry, one more line. Ahead, yeah. So the, so the, <laughs> the, when people say that to me, I say, you know, you're absolutely right. I do trust and you trust me. So let's put it on paper, you know, so that's that's so good. we can solidify. That is definitely good. <laughs> yeah. Know? Yeah. So I, I, I like this approach because it's saying handshakes, not that handshakes are bad, but that handshakes uh, as an alternative to something which is more secure, you know, is bad because of the, the, the fact that there are people who are going to cheat you or who you can't trust. And I think it also makes sense that this is talking, I mean, Shlomo is talking to Jews. Like we do have contracts we do have adim you know and i think it's reasonable to assume the puzzle is talking about like yeah the guy just says just shake on it yeah so that's yeah. good bro yeah yosef i'm thinking maybe like this is a bigger idea i mean but like i think i agree with that idea is that like kind of the theme of the puzzle seems to be about like um you see it's not a guy who doesn't shake hands right this is a guy who right. doesn't like to, to shake hands right Right. Yeah. So I, I don't think it's saying not to do business. I think it's saying that a guy who doesn't think that like a social agreement, so to say, right, where there's no like, um, like objective measure for it or like something that you can keep something that's purely like a handshake is really only between you two. It's like right. it's really a social agreement that those are not reliable on the guy. And what's like the an Arev is a case where you um, where you are basically saying that you're giving yourself up um you're trusting this guy to not put you in i mean you really uh, you're it is kind of the epitome case where you're saying i'm just trusting you right with no ramifications i'm purely on the social that you're not going to put me in debt but if you do it's okay right, right? you're right. saying that the guy who and it's not just saying this particular case but it's saying a guy who would do that right? yeah we do that with a stranger and just be like loose with his um, money and just have no like objective objective measure for like his trust. That guy is going to get destroyed because he okay. really has no uh, he has no like objective measure for it. Okay, so I what I want to do is I okay I, I I agree with you that that you're stating a more uh, specific idea. Okay, uh, and I think that right now the way I'm seeing it is that there's like a Venn diagram here. Like in other words, Ariel's idea. Your idea, Yosef, could be a more developed version of Ariel's uh, idea, or Ariel's idea could be the first step towards a different idea. You know, you're putting your uh, the emphasis on the the just the social reality uh, being the, the backer of this thing, uh, and uh, but I could also see like and and you're explaining the first half to be where like this is also a thing where you're just relying on the social reality. I could also see another thing where where the second half is like Ariel wants to learn it, that this is like a a handshake deal and the first half actually is a contract you know and that's drawn up i don't know what the procedures are for like uh becoming a guarantor for someone but i uh you know i i could see a thing where it is much more uh you know it's papers are signed and it's warning you about two different types of threats you know so i i think both of these are are, are live uh, live approaches okay right yeah uh zach um yeah zach yeah um so I, I was taking this, uh, so I have a 
a whole idea, but it's still unpolished. So there might be snags that need sure. working out. Um, but I was taking this down a, 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 a different um, train of thought, which is I think this puzzle could be about um, communal development. Um, and I think that it, like you, you familiar with like the the butterfly effect, mm -hmm. um, and like the Unless expanding... it's changed, meaning like little uh things can have a, a drastic unforeseen. Yeah, and but maybe actually more. Of, um, that was just an association of something else, which is the expanding spheres of spheres of influence, which is like you first focus on yourself, mm -hmm. which that's where it's related to the butterfly effect. Then you focus on those around you, and mm -hmm. you keep on having larger spheres of impact. Yeah. Um, and so, um, I think one of the explanations I've heard, for example, about why, um, uh, uh, like, like why laws differ between Jews and non-Jews in terms of like Ashava Saveda and like other certain areas like that, yeah. um, has to do with like where you put your primary focus on. Yeah. You know, so it's like you don't ignore if like your brother is homeless, you don't ignore him and go to some poor country across the world to hand out bread. You right. help your brother first. Right. Um, and so I think that when this doesn't have to be necessarily talking about Jews and non-Jews, but I think in terms of expanding your sphere of influence is strangers or people who are outside of that mm. circle. Mm -hmm. um and so it's like focus first on the people within your circle um and then if you expand your circle because you've already helped everyone in your circle then maybe someone who was a stranger before is isn't a stranger now because your capacity has increased mm -hmm. um and a way to make sure that you're doing that correctly and you're expanding your sphere honestly um is and I think there's there's more than one benefit to the second half of the puzzle, but I'm just going on this flow for a second. Yeah, is by hating handshakes, because to me handshakes represent the idea of like social likability. Mm -hmm. um, it's almost like a commentary on like modern social media, like yeah. TikToks and Facebook. Like we have the literal thumbs up button, you know, which is maybe close to the the handshake he's uh -huh. talking about, uh -huh. you know, and. If, if you're if you're loving handshakes if you're loving that like button then you're actually you're you're ignoring your community circle you're just trying to get more and more likes on a numerical scale you know you're just getting more handshakes uh -huh. and so by hating handshakes saying i'm not chasing the more the more likes on the like buttons you're actually putting more ener energy to those in your closer circle and then once you have uplifted everybody in your closer circle, then you can expand at a natural pace your circles outwards rather than just trying to get everybody's approval and not help the people around you that need your help. Okay. So I entirely agree with your idea, but I, I entirely disagree with it as an interpretation of the puzzle. And I'll tell you why. Three reasons. Uh, one is for the first half that... Um, it seems like it's telling you not only like don't prioritize the stranger, it's saying you're going to suffer extreme harm personally if you prioritize the stranger. So this is more of a question than an objection, but I would want to know how that comes about. I guess the question is like if the message is to prioritize the people closest to you uh, or your community or whatever, then like like why frame it as a threat and then how does that threat come about? So I guess that's a, 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 a problem and then the question. And then the, I, the, the move I like you're making is saying that Sone to, Tokim, one who, who um, hates handshakes, is really just the opposite of loving handshakes. I like that move a lot, okay? So in other words, what seemed like a very extreme statement, like you gotta hate handshakes, it's possible that hate doesn't mean like, like try to kill all the handshakes that, that like come to you. Maybe it just means that like, it's the opposite of, of love, you know? But saying that one who hates handshakes will be secure I, I'm also just uh, it, it. So, so can I tie the the two questions okay, to okay, sure. together? Yeah. Because yeah. what I'll what the way I'll answer secure will be the same way I answer your first question, which okay. is you're going to be secure 
from being utterly broken. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and then to explain how you'll be utterly broken is that he's pointing out that, yeah, the expanding sphere of influence is the healthy way to go about helping others and helping the world. But it's not just a selfless endeavor. It's selfish too, because if you go about it the incorrect way, you're going to come to harm. Meaning mm -hmm. if you ignore your closest circle and you develop toxic relationships with people around you and you just focus on having a, a, a great TikTok following, mm -hmm. you're going to lose your support system. You're mm -hmm. going to lose all the things in life that give you, bring you joy and comfort and security. Uh -huh. And you're going to end up being destroyed by that. Okay, so I'll give you a good example of that. Uh, and uh, and I, that warms me to the idea a little bit more. And then I'll call on Yosef, which is that um, I think that's an explanation given. Ariel, maybe you'll tell me because maybe you, you read this uh, quick, uh, more recently than I have. I think this is the Malbim's interpretation of why Akashvers threw a party for Shushan. Um, because what Akashvers was really trying to do when, with his like long party, uh, you know, the 180-day one, is that he was trying to uh, solidify alliances abroad you know throughout his kingdom because he was not born into in, in uh, you know into the monarchy he seized it so he was trying to to take care of that but then he realized that he had to also like solidify the the loyalties at home which is why with the abroad things he only made the party for like all the nobles but for shushan he made the party for everybody because he wanted to get on like everybody's side you know that's in the, i think that's in the argument whether he's melch tipesh or melch right yeah yeah, yeah. Well, well, he's going the, uh, the mob in this approach right, right? Of course, the model who was a super genius. Right, right. But I'm saying I think that was his example for that. Yeah. All right. So I, 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 I that that definitely helps the idea because you you are explaining what it means to be broken. Um, let me just call in Yosef and then Ariel, and then we'll come back. Yeah, Yosef. I uh, maybe I think I have a question on Zach, which is that like, wouldn't they give a positive example for like usually the Mishlei style gives like a positive example and a negative example for like the points trying to make? Wouldn't it say that like? it's in the frame of reference of you should focus on the ones within and not and not go too far out right because it's i like i get what you're saying i'm just saying like it's very it's going to the negatives very fast and i'm mentioning like what you should do right it's saying that like you're kind of like you shouldn't do these things okay well what should you do instead right so right? Can, I, can i just actually just jump in with the methodology thing on that uh and then you could give your answer is that um, that uh, I've said before that uh, it is kind of hard to say why didn't Michelle say something, you know, but so so in that sense, like it's not a knockout question, but if we could find some reason, which I presume Zach is going to venture something to say, if we could find some some like reason which would justify this style like it is a style initially where it only says the bad decisions and you have to infer the good decisions so then that would be the type of answer i think to look for but we're never gonna be i don't think we're gonna be able to say like like if the question i don't necessarily think you're asking this Joseph, but like if the question is well it should say the good also so then we're never gonna get there but but if we're looking for like okay it's saying the bad but why does it need to emphasize the bad then then that's a fruitful inquiry yeah zach um yeah so i mean the 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 thought that comes to mind when you ask the question is that I feel like a lot of the Mishle Pasuk is telling us about this world of Mishle and saying yeah. like here's how you operate in this world and this is a border Pasuk it's saying mm. here's the border right uh -huh. if you okay, stray past this border and you keep yeah. on thinking you're going to use Mishle principles now that's going to destroy you you know you're you're going to yeah. be not doing Mishle principles past this line and it's interesting um, because I, I think oh, sorry did I cut you off um, the uh, it's interesting that according to that, it almost sounds like the uh, the audience is a like someone who's trying to be a tzaddik, you know, someone who's trying to help like the greater system, and it's saying whoa 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 you there there's uh, there is a uh, there's a priority here, and you might end up like shooting yourself in the foot, you know, in your efforts to try to like help help everybody. Okay, I'm warming to the idea. Yeah, uh, Ariel, you got something? Yeah, can can I can I give an idea for the first half of the puzzle? Is this uh, in line with your approach, Zach's approach, or a new approach? I just want to keep track. I, I don't know. I don't know if it's in line with my approach yet. I'm okay. Fine. I I think it is. Okay, I, but you're not. You're not trying to extend Zach's. Is that? No, I I can't. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. 
Go ahead. Um, you sounded so defeated when you said that. <laughs> no, I'm not defeated. I just have a different approach. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. You know, I have my own mind here. I don't have to. I know. No, people. I just, I know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to define czar um, after I explain the first half of the post. <laughs> okay. Okay. I want to say that. Um, you know, that if you co-sign for an individual, you know, just to keep it very simple for a second, who you absolutely don't know at all, yeah, you're basically taking a huge risk. Right. Right. Like you're putting yourself in a situation where like you have you don't know who he is. Right. You you, you know, you're just relying on his word, right? right? You're you you have no affiliation with him at all meaning you have no one to go to if if he does not hold up to his or whatever it is right um you you you're not in the same circles you're you're basically you're you have no no friend group at all right Right. that's obviously like terrible and and you know so um so when you let's say you you sign i don't know co-sign for a lease or something like an apartment yeah. And like he doesn't pay his end now you now everything falls on you yeah right you're gonna you're gonna lose you know i don't know 40 grand a year or 20 40 grand a year on an apartment right. you know that you don't have any use yeah so that being said i want to define czar as someone who um you know because now now the question is like well why would you sign for anyone obviously it's like a little crazy why would you sign for a total stranger like what would compel you to sign for total stranger right so i want to say that maybe a czar could also be an individual who who you know like like someone at work or someone who you've met before you know you have some affiliation with however you don't have leverage over them Meaning, you, meaning, what I mean by leverage, you don't have like someone who you can talk to about them or someone who you can pressure him with another, another individual or another um, um, setting that you can use to leverage. I mean, the point is like, like there has to be more of an association with them than just by you knowing them as a person. Right. You're saying, but you're saying that though, because otherwise, why, why would you do this? Is that? Yes. Yeah. Yes. yeah okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a reasonable assumption. Yeah. I mean, I, I think the, the essence of the terms are, the terms are is referring to the fact that you don't have knowledge of who they are, uh, like, so you don't know how trustworthy they are, you know, or like how reliable they are to pay back your, your stuff. But I think you're doing, uh, giving a good explanation for what, what the Havmina is in the, in the first place. Um, can I actually take that approach and run with it? Oh, I, um, I, I, there's one more Sure, thing okay, I want to attempt to do to combine the second half of the pasuk with with what I'm saying now. Yeah, I want to say that um, um, you know, for the second half of the pasuk, you, you can have individuals. You know, like the pasuk is just coming to teach you the unification of the pasuk. I think is you know just just teaching you like what you know like what to do in in certain situations because like the second half of the pasuk is really just about. You know, um, you know, like don't be overconfident with uh, with with your your trust in people, right? Mm. You know, even if even if even if they they claim that they're trustworthy, this that whatever, always secure yourself in business, you know, because you'll just le- right. le- live a simple life. So the second, the first half of the process is don't feel guilty for not for for saying no. Don't feel guilty for not for for not signing for someone who, who you're who's a stranger. You 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 know you should just you know yeah. just be smart about. It. I don't know. I, I, I maybe there's unification there. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. So I I I was thinking along similar lines as you, and I like I said I learned this a very long time ago. It's possible I got this from Ravina Yona, but I don't want to look at it yet until uh, we develop our ideas first. So I'm going to say what what I have right now, and I I think it's. It's definitely in line with what you're saying. You tell me if you think that you're saying a different idea. Okay, so so let's take the first half. Okay, so why would someone co-sign for a stranger? I think that Ariel's right that like there has to be some connection here, or maybe not. I mean, maybe it's even like you know maybe like your uh, I don't know your maybe this counts is like maybe a, a, your friend says like 
like, you know, my nephew really, really, really needs like uh, to make a down payment on his house or whatever, you know, and like, uh, like I, I'm not in a financial position where I can do it right now, but like, come on, like, you know, you, you can do it. Like he's, he's good for the money, you know, like it could be some sort of loose connection like that. But here's right. the point. The point is, is that, that, you know, you're entering into a deal where not only do you stand only to lose, but you're not actually gaining any tangible thing right now. Right. Like you're just in a regular business deal, both parties, you know, uh, profit, right? Like that's the ideal, at least, you know, here you're just giving into the, the, whether it's guilt, whether it's, I want to be a good person, whether it's like, I want to appear charitable, you know, then you're, you're giving into that and setting yourself up for a, a situation where you can only stand to lose. Okay. And, uh, and there are lots and lots of emotions that could be at play. I mean, again, like, I think it's very hard when, uh, when you see someone who's in dire need, some people are moved by the mercy. Some people are moved by the social circumstance. Some people are moved by like something completely unrelated. Like, let's say for example, like, I don't know, like, let's say one day in my past, I needed a loan and someone didn't give it to me. And now this guy's in front of me and I don't know him, but he's asking for a loan and I don't want to be that guy. Like, I don't want to be, you know, it could be something that is totally uh, unrelated, but the point is, is that you got to know what you're getting yourself into, which is that you are entering into a deal where you can only stand to lose and you don't know how reliable the guy is. It's just a huge needless risk. Okay. So what's the solution for something like this? So this is where I'm going to say the second half is saying you have to hate handshakes. Okay. So uh, I, I had a term for this, which is a, you need to set up, I don't know if this is the term, but a, um, Like it's almost like a fire alarm system, okay? An emotion. Oh, uh, 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 oh, I had a term, a mishlaic fire alarm counter for. I had some some term for this, okay? I'll explain how it works, which is like this. A taboo. Not it's. Uh, I mean, it's it's similar to a taboo, but but a uh, fire alarm is gonna be more accurate, okay? Which is like this, is what what what's the thing that makes you? Or we've said why the person is tempted into making the decision, but what makes them actually go through with it? So what makes them actually actually go through with it is it's a very easy thing to do. All you do is you just agree or you shake your you shake the person's hand, okay? And you're, what you're doing is you're you're gaining instant goodwill or you're making yourself feel good or you're leaving the you're alleviating the guilt. But the consequences are not real to you because they're in the future and they're remote and you don't think they're going to happen, okay? So what you need to do is you need to envision the worst scenario and make that into a red alert that makes you absolutely like have a reaction of no when someone offers you a handshake. Okay. A Michelin siren. A Michelin siren, yeah. A Michelin siren is a good thing, yeah, right? So, so you need to set up a Michelin siren for handshakes. Now, this does not mean that you should never make handshakes, but what you need to do is you need to make it so whenever anyone extends their hand and says, you know, do we have a deal? You just have this visceral reaction of like, like no. And then what you could always do is you could always then take that, like, in other words, you need to create that counter, that emotional counter force that can, is so powerful that it overrides all those emotions that would cause you to like, like make rush in and make the handshake without thinking about the consequences. Then once you have that counter force, you can stop and think and say, okay, let me, let me sleep on it. Let me think about it. And then you could assess the deal later on. But the, the, the first reaction needs to be hating it. And I'll give an example. And I, I don't know if this is actually like a good example, but you know how, like when you're a kid, they, 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 they train you to think that like, like all strangers are dangerous, you know, like, I think that that's not the best policy because it leaves you with a really weird idea about like how to interact with people who you don't know, but whatever, that's the type of emotional reaction that like, I am, uh, you know, here's, here's good advice. Never get into a car, a car with a stranger. That's still good advice. Right. <laughs> but, uh, you know, oh. maybe not never, but like having that reaction of, of, uh, of, of, of never doing it, that's the type of thing that you need to get. So, so the, the puzzle, so I'll, I'll tell you an example of this, um, that the, when I said that I taught this in Hafter, what the scenario was, there was a kid who in, in my class, an 11th grader, who was very, very smart and, um, ended up being the valedictorian and like going to like some Ivy league school or whatever, but he was extremely, extremely like, um, uh, uh, he had a hard time saying no. So, so, so other kids in the grade would always ask him for help on their assignments and he would instinctively say no, or sorry, he would, so he would instinctively say yes, 
not knowing how long the assignment would take, like how many times people would ask him for this, you know, and he got into the situation where like, he was always spending so much of his time doing other people's like studying for them or like, like homework for them. So he, he asked me for advice. He said, like, is there anything that Michelet says about like situations like this? And this was the puzzle I came up with of like, you need to have a, a gut reaction where someone asks you for help on their homework and you just say no, right? After you have, and that's an, is that an extreme reaction? Yeah, it is. But you need to cultivate that extreme reaction in order to be able to get into a, an objective headspace where you can then like make a, a, an evaluation about whether this is really worth your time. And that's explaining why it's hatred and why it's all handshakes, uh, which seemed extreme on the surface. Just uh, wanted to point out about, you know, not getting into a car with a total stranger. Yeah. Nowadays, we do that all the time with Uber. I don't think that's a, a comparable case because uh, we do know that Uber is a company that, yeah, yeah. But, no, I'm just joking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kids, kids are going to get messed up if you keep telling them that. Yeah, right. Yeah. So, Ariel, going back to your idea, um, I was, uh, I, I think the first half is definitely in line. Can you remind me what you're saying for the second half again? Oh, the second half is just basically saying, you know, just, uh, just don't, just don't pure, just don't don't only rely on his word or his handshake okay right so i, I still think that idea yeah well. I, I was saying i still think that idea has separate merit as its own idea you know like like that you should be suspicious of people who don't want things in writing and who just want these informal agreements you know and i think that the emotion you said before like really is the emotion they appeal to you with come on like like you know we don't need to make this official like we're friends you know like it's i don't need this in writing um and i i think that that that's where like you should be wary you know like that it's like you don't because you feel like oh i don't want to be a bad friend or like i don't want to you know like like it's, it's not well, it's not just that it it's you know th that is a huge part like that happens all the time and right you know um you know, okay, like, you see, Abraham wanted uh, to actually, you know, he wanted to buy the cave uh, from uh, Ephron, right? He wanted to actually pay money. Everyone was like wanting to give it to him. And I think plain shot is that he, uh, you know, Avram didn't want people challenging his ownership of Maros on a fail afterwards. Right. right. Uh, you know, like, like the other thing I mentioned before was about, um, it, you know, it's also about just getting, just getting clarity, you know, like yeah, if, right. you, if you have like a conversation with someone, like yeah. how many times have you been in an argument just recounting what you guys said? Right. You yeah. Know, right. Like, exactly. like putting it down on paper makes it very clear about what happened at that time of the agreement. Yeah. Like, like you cannot argue with what you wrote down, you right. know, several yeah, months exactly. ago. It's just in paper. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to pause and give an example of this. Yeah. Like, like, like still, still keep it off recording. Did I turn it back on? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Um, sorry. Hold on. Hold on. Just a second. Let me, let me, sorry. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. Oh yeah. Yosef, go ahead. Um, I do. I mean, I, I don't know if we're like my approach is super different, but I think like actually never mind, never mind. Okay, I'm gonna try to answer your original question, which is um, uh, why is the Michelet free? I I know it was a question on Zach's thing, but I, I still want to answer it anyway. Is that um, uh, about why Mich? No, actually no, it was, it was just a question on Zach's thing. What was I gonna answer? You asked something else. That was a good question. Wait, was it later on? Oh yeah, this question, question nine. Is Michelet really telling you? Don't involve yourself in a system of handshakes and avoid all harm. So the answer is, is, is according to me, is no. Really, Mishli is talking, the audience is someone who is, is prone to getting into agreements that are highly risky. And I don't think it's a specific, again, I don't think it's a specific cause. Like another, another person who this might be directed at is there are some people who are just really bad judges of character. You know, they're very, like my, my grandfather was a very, very, very trusting uh, person. Uh, and like, he would always like, like do these favors, uh, of like, like, ex you know, like he had uh, tenants who were renting from him and he would like extend, <laughs> I, I don't know the details. This is in Hawaii. Okay. There's this one incident involving, um, that he, uh, he rented a house to someone and the guy like kept on, like not, uh, paying the rent and, and found out later on that this, this guy was like a pimp and had pet monkeys that just clawed up all the inside of the house, you know? And like, and then when, when, when my grandfather took him to court, like immediately fell into the trap of this guy's charisma and was just like friendly with him and stuff like that. And, and my grandmother was like, like, no, you, you, this guy like, like swindled you. Like, you, you know, there are people who just don't know how to guard against like entering into risky, you know, financially risky things 
because they're just too trusting, you know? So I think there's a wide variety of audience, um, uh, of, of, of possible audiences here. And the, the message is, it's telling you, it's not telling you not to enter into business agreements. It's telling you to set up this Michelet uh, uh, siren, you know, uh, alarm, you know, this, the smoke alarm to like act as a counterbalance against like this decision. I have yeah, to I, send you a funny video afterwards. Okay. Um, so I, I feel like there's a, a, a variant of the idea I was saying before that feels like it's, I don't know if it's the same or similar or hybrid to some of the examples you gave. Um, yeah. both this last one and one of the earlier ones. Um, but starting with the second half and then going backwards is that one who hates shank uh, handshakes is is secure uh, is being is talking about the idea of um, like chasing approval. Um, right. And like if you're always uh, chasing everybody's approval, then you're gonna end up like backing yourself into corners and being taken advantage of. Yeah. Um, and so there's he, he the the public is giving the two extremes. So if you hate handshakes, meaning that you completely get yourself um, uh, like your internal um, like on the word like approval is the wrong word, um, but uh, like your your like self esteem like it's similar to self-esteem is i'm blanking on the word It'll come to yeah. me later i can uh put it in the Michelin chat um but uh so like the the the, the if, if if you if you um if if you get this feeling externally um and you're chasing it all the time then um you'll or, or if you get it internally for yourself then you'll be secure because you won't be chasing it all the time and so that's like the, the the security in the second half, and and then the opposite of that would be a neutral position where um, you're not secure, but you're not necessarily insecure. And then the first half is saying when you're so insecure that you're always chasing to do favors for everybody, no matter right. who they are. The strangers, right? Exactly, yeah. and that's when you're going to end up utterly broken. Uh, are you talking about like validation? Validation, Listen? yes, yeah. that was the okay, word. Yeah, yeah. Oh. What a right. mental scratch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right, right, right. Yeah. That, that it could be another, uh, another emotion at play here. Um, I was going to say one other thing that came up when you were talking about this. Oh yeah. So I, there's still two approaches I want to play out. Okay. One, I have three approaches, really. I want to go back to Ariel's first approach and just like articulate that about the guy who, who, who says we don't need it in writing let's just shake hands. Don't you trust me? You know, and I want to see if you could, if we can interpret the first half of the puzzle in that vein. Like, I think there's an idea there itself. Like the guy who wants a handshake, who doesn't want to get involved in legal technicalities. And, and again, the, the consequence is like, he's going to, he's going to cheat you because you didn't actually have it in writing. Um, can you, can you say that one more time? Yeah. You, my understanding of what you said for the second half, the first time around was it's talking about a guy who just wants to shake hands and doesn't want to actually have like a formal deal. You know, he just wants to keep it unofficial, keep it off the books. And this is saying you should be wary of those things. Cause that's where, that's where the cheaters like to operate. And I, this might, if I'm right in my reading of Sadigon, that's one who hates handshakers is, is uh, secure. Meaning that, you know, you know that there are people who are trying to do this and you, you stay away from those people. So what I'm trying to do is take that idea and learn the first half somehow in line with that. Yeah, I have an answer to that. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, the answer to that is very simple. It's even with the contract. Yeah, that's that's the way I want to take it. Yeah, because I'm assuming um, that the first It's even the with the contract because let's say the guy's dirt poor, you can't sue him for anything. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so, so maybe this is it. Okay. Maybe, no, no, it's, it's like this. So the second half is talking about uh, deals where where you could get caught up because the terms are not spelled out. And then yeah. the first half is talking about people who um, like one of the parties is, uh, is in the shadows. In other words, the deal yeah. is in the shadows or the, one of the parties is in the shadows. And if you yeah. don't know who you're dealing with, then like you, you can't be involved in, in a deal who you don't know who you're dealing with. Oh man, I gotta, okay. I, I have to pause this and say this right now. Hold on. Um, hold on uh, just one second here. Uh, right. So, um, so, yeah. so I just wanted to just add to what you know what I was saying about sure. you know, the first half. 
Yeah. Um, it's, it's not just like, okay, he may be poor or whatever. And like, you don't know anything about him. I mean, it's also about like, you know, like, like even if you're on a contract and, 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 you know, like, like going through that entire process, it's yeah. very difficult, you know, yeah. it, like the, the lawyers, the courts, right. The base them, the aid them, right. you know, like, like there's something that like, like in New York, let's just take rentals for instance, like in New York, like, like it could take a minimum a year to evict the tenant. Right. You know, yeah. if, you, yeah. if, you, if you have bad tenants, like right. that's just the laws of New York. Yeah. You know, it's just, yeah, that's a good example. Yeah. Zach. And then I have another example for the first half. Yeah. It's just like the, I feel like there's a saying or something like a signature is only as valuable as a person signing. Yeah. That's a, that is a good saying. I haven't heard that before. Yeah. I have an example of this is, and I don't know the details is so long ago, but in my first year in yeshiva, then there were a bunch of yeshiva guys who decided to work for at one of these like pace off programs like at a hotel but i think it was a new pace off program and so I, I they signed the contracts and everything but the thing is is that they didn't this guy didn't have a reputation and i think the guy just like didn't pay them like he just like like he, he avoided them avoided them avoided them and just like didn't pay them and i don't think they ever got their money back but it was a situation like that where like they thought that because they signed the contract and it was official and it was a legal structure then it was fine but these the, the guy was just too uh you know untrustworthy okay good so we got ariel's idea and then I want to go back to Zach's now because um, I, I, like I said, I was warming up to that. So let me try saying Zach's, Zach, your idea. And then you tell me if I'm missing anything here. So the puzzle is talking about someone who has a misplaced priority in terms of who they devote their, 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 uh, their resources and their, and their, their help to. Right. So, so it's someone who is tempted to, to help strangers beyond their immediate, um, their immediate vicinity, right? More tempted to help strangers than, than, than the local. So it's saying that, um, that if, so, okay, so I'm running to the problems already, that the real way to do it, according to the Torah, is you help the local first and you expand outwards. And this guy has the opposite thing. And one of the reasons, is, I think this is implicit in what you're saying, is like, is systemic, like flourishing is gonna like have compounding benefits if you, you know, help your local community and your family. And it's going to, it's going to lead to a greater net good rather than like helping someone who we have no connection to, you know? So it's saying that if you do take that approach, if you make that mistake of going to the stranger, it's going to lead to a collapse internally in terms of your system. And, uh, and that's expressed as like a lack of secure. Yeah. See, I'm, I'm not sold on it now again, because the, this does seem to be, how do you explain the security thing again? Oh, you were saying security is like social, um, the 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 approval so yeah so here the 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 hating shank handshakes yeah is basically a way to help you with the goals outlined in the first half mm -hmm. meaning like how do you avoid getting right. too caught up in the strangers right is by hating handshakes right because right. if you love handshakes and you're going around always trying to 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 you know get everybody's validation um then um then the uh then you're gonna end up wanting to co-sign for strangers you're gonna end up wanting to right okay that to, that idea is good right um yeah so you know what do we even need the expanding circles i know that's a good idea but but maybe maybe this is just talking about someone who wants to please everybody and is always wanting to like be in agreement with everybody is going to end up making that mistake of like, like agreeing to a deal that sets him up with a stranger that's going to lead to his fall. I think that's a much like more direct idea than positing this entire thing about like helping the, the other, the other people. I, I like that element of your idea. I'm totally on board with, I'm still not quite sold on, on the, uh, yeah. So I, I think, I mean, I think that they both are true. The reason why I like the, the, the idea of helping others in the prioritization element is because he's saying like he, who co-signs for a stranger. Yeah. Okay. Well, what about co-signing for not a stranger? I feel like the, uh, the, the expanding circles just answers some of the surrounding questions it doesn't it's right. not as in opposition to the fact that right. he I, might I be broken that. from a single deal it's right. just saying that even if he's not broken from a single deal he'll be broken because he's destroying his his inner network right i hear by the way regarding your earlier question about is the broken just the fact that he's gonna have to pay 
or is it more than that? So uh, the way I was learning it, that um, that uh, that the Puzzle is warning against someone who's over eager to say yes uh, to help people who he doesn't know. So I think definitely is going to be broken from having to pay, but that Mida is going to lead to making commitments to many, many cases that are going to end up like, like uh, giving him uh, other consequences, you know, like in other words, it's not just going to be this particular deal. It's going to be that whole way of operating where you're, you're, you're constantly like agreeing to help people who you don't know is going to lead to like, like uh, ultimate breaking. Okay. Yosef, was there an approach that you took that we were on the way to developing and didn't develop? Yeah. Um, my approach was kind of like the premise for like your approaches a little bit, but it was yeah. saying that like, um, that the, yeah, it was that the theme of this book is like talking about like just trusting in the social. Yeah. And so it's saying like shaking hands, right. Is a sign of trust between the, both people, but it's saying that a guy, um, whose philosophy is that he does not rely on the social, right. He hates, he doesn't rely on it. And I don't know about how it fits with Sony so well, but that might be what it's saying versus love, right? We could take yeah. that approach. Yeah. Um, he will succeed rather than the guy who, um, who, who in a case where it's like Arave, where there's no like um, success for you, right? You can only pay or just not do anything, yeah. right? The guy who just like, like trusts people and like just says, whatever, I'll do you a favor without doing any background check or like any um, like check on this guy that guy will not will be completely destroyed yeah right? because so, he relies purely on the social right i think the way that uh, i'd like to like um consolidate the approaches is that i think in terms of actual decision making then then i i, I like my approach and ariel's approach because uh, it focuses on just the this is a bad decision and you will you're setting yourself up for for a uh, unnecessary risk in terms of the emotion behind the decision then i think I still agree that there could be many reasons for this, but ultimately they, they all boil down to the social or to some desire to do good, which fits in line with yours and Zach's approach, you know, in terms of like the emotion that this is addressing. Yeah. yeah right. um, you know, I, I, uh, there's another question that I think is coming from this, uh, you know, the ideas that we have is um, what if, what if he has a good reputation, you know, uh, with, you know, without signing, without signing. The guy who is basically it? talking to the audience. The guy, the guy who you were in business with, you know, like the stranger. No, this the second half of the puzzle guy. The second half. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Right. He has a good reputation. He's just known. You know. You know. Let's say he says, you know, like, like whatever. Like, trust me. Like, I have a good reputation. Uh, it's just a tirka. You know, like whatever. Right. Yeah. No. So that's what I'm saying is that the 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 the, the second half is not saying that every person should hate handshakes. It's saying that this person who the puzzle is talking to should hate handshakes. You know, if you are prone to saying yes and to entering into these agreements, you have to set up this this uh this you have to stigmatize handshakes in order to be able to get yourself to have distance to be able to evaluate it properly. Then but, you can shake out. Right, but he's not necessarily saying that like. You know, like, like, uh, you sh meaning you could go into a handshake deal, but just your knee jerk reaction should just be no. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Yosef, were you going to say something else earlier? Um, yeah. For your, uh, for Ariel's explanation, why, uh, you're saying the audience is, is the Ra Yero, uh, uh, is the first half? Yeah, it's the same audience. The, the puzzle is directed towards the guy who is prone to entering into agreements that only set him up for a huge risk and no benefit. Gotcha. Okay, fine. So it's yeah. it's a specific response for the audience. Right. It's not a general audience. It's for yeah. an audience. Okay, fine. All right. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and I think this is a this is you know uh, this is like a good intentioned uh uh you know person right like they they just want to help people but like that good you know the you know what they say about the the uh the road to hell right yeah Zach. Yeah um i was curious uh you mentioned that you had previous ideas i was curious if that was were similar or different oh yeah cool. that was the idea about yeah yeah okay. it's, it was hard for me to shake that one yeah i'm you know i got this is a funny thing i got a lot better at forgetting ideas uh, in terms of like to re like if i if i learned this puzzle last year for the first time i can reset the idea or i'll naturally forget it if it was the first time i taught it it's very hard to forget it. I, I don't know why, you know, or if I, if, you know, I even write, forget stuff I write about. Okay, let's do this though. I, I think I got my idea from Rubina Yona. So I just want to read Rubina Yona 
uh, and uh, see what we get. And then I also want to do at least one more of the Mepharshim. I'm going to do what I did last time, which is I'm going to read from my uh, better version. And so there might be slight differences. Um, okay. Ra Yeroa Ki Arvazar. Ish Ra Yeroa. Oh, Ish Ra Yeroa Vishaber. A man, I think, will be. No. Oh, wow. Okay. I totally misunderstood this. Okay. So he's translating it, I think, as. Hold on. Rabinu. Rabinu uh, Yona is translating it as an evil man will be harmed by co-signing for a stranger. Okay. In other words, I, I, I'm pretty sure that's when Ishra, an evil man, Yeroa, will be broken, the Shaber, meaning he'll be he'll be harmed and broken when he signs co-signs for a stranger. Let's Who see cares? if this oh we'll, we'll find out. Isn't uh this? Hazar, uh, ki Arvzar. Right, right, right. Yeah, Hazar, the stranger, who ha'ish asher lo hikir v'lo huchzak et lo b'minas hanemanus. So the czar is a person who is not, uh, he doesn't recognize him and he is not established with him in the trait of trustworthiness, meaning you don't know the guy's trustworthiness level. V'im lo yirtze l'shalim hazar ha'hu halove. If this strange stranger does not want to pay the lender, o she'in lo l'shalim, or he doesn't have enough money to pay, so there's going to be one of two consequences. Either the, uh, um, oh, sorry, sorry. I always see, I always get these terms mixed up. Let me read that again. If the stranger who is borrowing money doesn't want to pay, or he doesn't have enough money to pay, then he's, uh, he's not going to escape from one of two consequences. Either the creditor will, will like, Yell at him. The Yechatav Ashim Kilo Yishal in Low. He'll he'll uh, he'll indict him for um, for not paying him. The Tirbe Alav Im Hachatas Vahasham Hataluna Vahataromis, and he will increase in addition to the actual sin of not paying. He'll increase complaints and uh, and conflicts. O Shiach Rihu who based in Lishalim or Basin will compel him to to pay. The Yachzor Vietag Alalove Vyadinimo, and then he'll go back and um, and yell at the borrower. And uh, enter into a fight with him. Venimsa konem madun umriva vagam hesed mamun, and he's going to acquire two things. He's going to get quarrels and strifes, and he's also going to get monetary loss. Im ein lelove l'shalim o shuhu ish alam va'aritz. If the if he doesn't have the ability, im ein lelove l'shalim. If the borrower cannot pay, or if he's a uh, a powerful like intimidating man. Okay, maybe I'm still reading, misreading the Rain Yona. In other words, I, I think what he's saying, hmm, I think he's describing a situation where like... The first thing that came to mind, and I, I don't know if this is at all relevant, is the tendency for like the FBI and stuff to like put away big mob bosses for like yeah. evasion, tax evasion, you know, like Al Capone and right. whatever rather right. than like all of their other crimes. I yeah. don't know if this is like, like saying this is how to get the downfall of, yeah. of these evil men, but. I feel like I'm missing something here also. Yeah, let me, I'm gonna continue reading and see if anything clicks. Um, I definitely, I don't think I got my interpretation that I give you from the Rebbein Yonah. This is not familiar to me. I have no memory of this place. Gam hiskalia ki hu ish avel v'lo shilem ki im behechreach besin. Uh, also, if it's revealed that he's an, uh, a man of iniquity who will not pay unless Basin forces him. Oh, okay. So maybe he's learning it like this. Ish ra yerua ki arav zar. Oh, no, I'm not getting it. Alkin amar ra yerua ki arav zar. Okay, let's see he explains. But who? Ish ara, this evil man. Tikrena oso ka'ela ba'arvus hazar. This stuff will happen to him when he when he co-signs for a stranger. Ach ish tov, but a good man, lo tuvu'ehu kozos ba'arvus. A good man will not enter into a co-signing with all this. Ki hu gomer b'dato mitchila l'shalim l'milve below din udvarim im ein l'love l'shalim. Because he will um, agree uh, ahead of time with it, uh, like he'll, he'll consent ahead of time to pay for the borrow, for the, to pay the uh, the lender without a court case uh, or or fighting. Uh, if the borrower cannot pay back. 
He won't need to get into a quarrel with the, the, the lender afterwards. That's why he went into this cosigning for the first place. If it weren't for this fact, he wouldn't have become a, uh, a guarantor for the stranger. Um, because he's a good man who, oh, I, I have a good case. He's a good man. Who uh, who hates uh, quarrels and and seeks peace? Okay, I got the case. What he's saying here? Okay, here's the case. Okay, if I am a bad man, then I'll make this mistake of entering of co-signing for a stranger, and then what's going to happen is either the guy doesn't pay me, and then the the lender gets mad at me, or he's going to take me to court, and or I'm going to take this guy to court. It's going to end up being a whole thing. But if I'm a good man and I co-sign for this stranger without knowing, um, and I know full well that I'm treating this as, uh, I'm, sorry, I'm gonna give you an example. I have to turn off the recording for this also. Okay. So that's what the Rebbein Yona means when he says that the, the good man, He's going to it with eyes wide open, knowing that, okay, I know full well that this guy might not be able to pay, and I'm willing to back him, whether it's for tzedakah or whether it's like for helping this person, whatever it is, you know? So that, that's how he's, he's, uh, he's learning it. Uh, let's read the second half and see if we can make sense of it, and then we'll uh, wrap it up for tonight. Um, second half. The Sony Tokin Batea. Uh, so this is is like um, uh, extending the principle of distancing, co-signing, and saying that a person should not trust in his wealth. Unless he is a person who hates this mida. Once he hates people who who behave like this, he'll he'll distance himself from the thing. Uh, and not stumble in it. As long as he doesn't hate this mida, um, then he will not be secure from stumbling in this when people seduce him and and uh, and plead with him to enter into a co-signing agreement. And he won't be able to hold back from granting their request. As it says, a soft tongue breaks bones. So that, that's like what I was saying. is like, he's going to allow himself to get guilted into it. I don't have the full picture of what Rubini is saying. It, it, it sounds like the second part is he's saying it's a way to, to make sure like uh, that he's following the, uh, the, the parameters yeah. in the first act. So it's possible what I'm remembering is in my idea I maybe got the second half from Rubino Yona, but not the first half. Because I was trying to say the similar idea for the second half. It's like a a, 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 a guard a, a against entering into this kind of yeah. agreement. Yeah, meaning like, because because what you were saying, the first half is like, if you have the right intentions, right, then lend, then the being a co-signer is great. And if you have right. the wrong intentions, it'll break you, a right. mindset. Yeah. So how do you make sure you have good, the right mindset is by hitting handshakes. Meaning if you're... Yeah. If, if you're just doing it because you're trying to get people you, the that it, like a uh, agreement like a uh, validation or whatever from that this other person yeah. um and you're entering into for the wrong reasons then you're gonna put it's gonna put you in the broken category exactly so right. to make sure you have the right intentions hate the handshake yeah. and if you do it anyway then yeah. you're good <laughs> right yeah yeah that's good way to put it yeah yeah uh, I still you know a question just to think about uh not, not I don't think we have time to discuss it but question to think about is, you know, I feel like the parameters of this are huge. It's not just about co-signing, despite the fact that the puzzle was very, very specific, you know, but like any situation where you are, according to the way I was interpreting it, any situation where you are feeling like you're helping somebody and you actually are helping them, you're helping them get the deal, but you're feeling like you're doing a, you're, you're, you're getting a benefit without any cost when in reality you're you're setting yourself up to incur tremendous loss without any benefit you know that type of thing has has huge applications you know like i could see people making this mistake in in, in a whole lot of areas like let's say for example like like um one thing that i um <laughs> uh I, okay i th this could be just just a humor on my part but like um I don't like endorsing any products or services that I myself 
don't use and can't testify to, you know, because the person will say like, well, come on, like, can't you just like, like, uh, um, you know, like uh, I'm starting a new uh, business on Facebook. Can't you just like, like my page or whatever, you know? And like, it feels like, okay, yeah, I, I just like it, you know, like w- w- what's the harm in that? But here's the thing is like, if people trust me and they think, oh, well, well, like I liked it. So like, uh, you know, and, you know, and so I, I, and I have good taste or whatever, or I, I, I know what's good and it ends up being bad. I'm basically like, I basically like set myself up to have a cost, namely to my reputation without any benefit, like without any real benefit, you know? So it's like, uh, it's the same reason why, I mean, I, I, uh, I'm, I also, when I used to write a lot more letters of recommendation, like I would, um, you know, there, there's, uh, there's two practices among teachers and I, I really disagree with one of them, okay? Which is that like, you know, when, when they're writing recommendations for seminary for like, or for yeshivas, you know, like there are teachers who will only write good things, okay? I don't want to do that. Okay. And I, I, if there's a kid who's asking me for a recommendation and they've had lots of behavior problems, like throughout their high school, I'll say like, look, I only write recommendations if I tell the truth and the whole truth. And obviously I'm going to make you look good, but I'm going to be honest about it because I don't want to jeopardize the value of my own word. And I don't want to put myself in a situation where like, I pretend that this kid is all good. And then they go to the seminary and then they have behavior problems. And then the seminary doesn't trust our school anymore. You know, like, so it's like, it'd be very easy. Like, well, come on, what's the harm in just like writing the kid a good recommendation letter? I don't believe that because I think that you're setting yourself up for like, like a, a real cost here. So just, it pays to think about how far can we extend this puzzle? You know, like even for example, I mean, this is a crazy example, but maybe it could extend this far. You know, my, like, look, I don't know, okay, this is a crazy example. So I, I, I live in a sub, my, I'm from a suburb of Seattle called Mercer Island. Okay, Mercer Island, has a small Orthodox Jewish community, but the island itself is 25% Jewish, okay, which is pretty big, all right? So the, I saw, someone sent me a petition to petition the school district to have schools close on Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, okay? Uh, like, because they say we, they close on a lot of other holidays. There's the, ho- uh, you know, holiest holidays of the year. A quarter of the island is Jewish. So they said, sign this petition, you know? So I'm thinking to myself, like, okay, what's the harm of signing a petition, right? Like, you know, I don't go to the school district and like, I'm having, you know, like I'm letting Jews be off on Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. So that seems like a good thing. Right. But here's the thing, like, it's very easy to just sign your name to a petition. I don't know, like, you know, uh, is this one of these cases where like, like, like having, if I say yes to this, so that's very easy, but I also just don't sign petitions in general, unless I really believe in it. And there are people who just sign all petitions that like come their way, you know, do I really want my name out there on all these petitions about all these causes? Like might not that might that not come back to bite me? Like, I don't really know. It feels like it could be one of these situations here. If I really believed in it, I would do it. Or if it had direct benefit to me, I would do it. But like, if it's just to feel like I'm doing good, I don't know, you know? So that's my, uh, that's also why, you know, I look, you know, people on social media will change their like Facebook picture to like having like support for various things. I don't, I never do that, you know? And that's why it's like, well, I'm doing it for this. Well, someone's going to ask me to do it for that. I, 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 I want to stay away from all of that. Like if I say I never do it, then I never do it, you know? So I don't know, but that's my question is how far do we extend this? There are many things in the category of it's very easy to just agree to do it and it's no real cost, but you're, but are you really setting yourself up for a cost? I don't know. All right. I wish we had more time for more Mufarshim, but I think I got to call it quits for tonight. Okay. Uh, and uh, I'm going to try to be more vigilant. Look, when you, I, I really appreciate Zach when you send stuff and I always listen to it and I always rehearse like responses. I just got to make myself respond because I rehearse them and then I just never, uh, I never end up sending them. So, so like, I got to like, like do it immediately. I, that's, that's my, that's my fault. Okay. So feel free to follow up. Keep following up. I always enjoy your yeah, thoughts. Yeah, you, you, uh, you did remind me with your last story about like the petitions. There's like a literal story. I was debating whether it's worth a share, but it's kind of semi-relevant. But there's sure, a little story. I could, but I was, I, I could also do it as a voice note of the Mishlei chat. That's why I was. Oh, okay, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah um, but the, the the title is just that the, the there's a, uh, I think I think it's the flaw. There's, there's two rabbis that with a similar name, but apparently I'm related to him. And he was once chief rabbi of Frankfurt in like, I don't know, a few hundred years ago. And okay. he got that position 
through not signing a petition. <laughs> oh, interesting. <laughs> nice. Okay, I do want to hear the story. Yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. Well, right, guys, good, thanks for coming. Good and, session. Uh, Thank you very much. Next time. All right. Take care. Thank See you so much. Bye. Bye.